Hey up everyone, what's going on and welcome back to York City, where two incredibly important games today. First up, the away trip to Manchester City, who sit one point ahead of us at the top of the table. And then of course, the return fixture for the Hoffenheim Champions League game. Both are must wins. I say must wins, actually, I would settle for draws in both of them to stay one point behind City, of course, the away game, and to pray that they drop points, a win would be very, very helpful indeed, though. Godoy still top of the goals, Cantoro still top, Cantoro still stop, Cantoro still top of the assists. That's a difficult sentence. So three games since we last met, and 13 goals scored. Yeah, we've had a little bit of fun in these three games. I was massively worrying. Obviously losing to Leeds, drawing to Norwich, and then drawing to Hoffenheim, particularly the way we did in both of those. I say the way we did in that one. That was all first half. But Hoffenheim, two late goals conceded. Did worry me. Late goals has been a thing all year, and it's not really cost us in the games that we've conceded late on. Has now. But West Brom, speaking of late goals conceded in a way, I mean, we were 5-0 up. They got two in the second half. One was a penalty. One was reasonably late on, 77 minutes. Didn't matter, let's be honest, at 5-0. They weren't coming back from that. Godoy with two, Grimes with one, Rick with one, Ramirez with one. Rick, an outside the box smash. Think company, think company. 4 0 against Swansea. Three goals for Gonzalez, a nice little hat trick there, and Vidal chipping in in between all those. We did rotate reasonably quite a lot there. I actually played Washington from the under 23s in defence, just because they advised me that Rick might be a little bit jaded lately, so I figured just rotate him out when I can. And uh, well, rotated out the wrong one because uh, Zata got injured in the following game. I'm actually not entirely certain if Rick may have been... Nope, that was it. They did warn me about Rick being jaded, potentially getting a little bit jaded if I didn't give him a rest. So this was the time I did do it because he is on a yellow card warning for both the FA Cup and the Premier League at this stage. Therefore, I didn't need to risk him against Swansea and I also didn't want to risk him against Leicester and have him out of this Man City game. Of course, that bit me in the backside when Azata got injured instead. So, yep. Still, lose, still lost one of our starting centre-backs. But four goals against Leicester, no return. Two from Sarri, one from Merez, one from Cantora again, who is scoring as well as assisting of late. They play Ben Goffrey in that one, so if we do manage to win the Premier League, he will get a Premier League medal for York, as well as one he has from Tottenham from a few years back. Just bobbing back to that table real quick, Tottenham, I've saved him from them. Frankly, they've had an abhorrent year, is the best word for it. Chelsea and Man United, confusingly, 7th and 8th, although Man United did win, did win the Carabao Cup. Everton, Everton and Sheffield United in 5th and 6th. Of course they are. But you would still argue with nine games to go that all four of us in this top four still in it. Liverpool more so just because they can get on 63 with their game in hand if they win it. Although it does appear to be against Man United. But if they do win that, then it'll be 65, 64, 63 comparatively when it does happen. But of course, we ourselves and Man City fight it out right now. So that is not going to stay like that. The Asata injury, by the way, uh, two to nine days left on it. It's not a massive long-term one. Thankfully, but he is out of a couple of crucial games, of course. I have not clicked on Azato in a while, and I did not realise his mentals look like that. Yeah, he's bloody good. It's an absolute tragedy you can't play. I think both of these guys are actually right-footed players. If I have Parkinson available, I will stick him in rather than Goffrey there. Goffrey can take the bench for the time being. Otherwise, I think my first 11 is already on the pitch right now. I'm just checking the bench. I don't need to sell in there anymore. I got him some game time against Leicester, so if we do win the league, a Premier League's medal is going to the sell. Just got to win the league first. Carpentier appears to be not on the bench, so I will correct that now and problem solved. Line will be as follows for Man City. Christian, Castillo, Parks and Rick Fiore. Not going to start attacking either. Vidal and Seri in the middle. Ramirez, Vidal and Cantora and Godoy. This is one of those ones where I would possibly consider a defensive formation. In fact, where is Teco? Let's bob him on the bench. I said I'd be happy with the draw. I'm not 100% convinced of that. Now I've started the game. They have bought Carl Robinson, by the way, from West Ham. Not sure how well I've... Talked about him in the past years in my England setup. Oh, sorry, it was Manchester City who bought Rosie. I thought it was Chelsea. Just just before we were regarded as enough of a club for these big players to come to. Went to Tottenham. It was a part of those two seasons where the two great strikers went to Tottenham. I just didn't have the pulling power to nab them. Frustrating. Not like matters because we've got seven now. But it's a little bit irritating when you see them line up against you. But with eight games to go after this one... If we lose here, it does get a little bit perilous if we want to get three titles in a row. We will have to recoup four points. And, well, here comes Robinson. That, if Kerbo goes to the end of this, I'm going to be incredibly irritated. Parkinson, who is enabled... I mean, he's cleared it, in fairness. That wasn't an intentional pass. But as soon as Parkinson gets on the ball, I know he's going straight to the opponent. 
Don't know why I played him. Sorry, sorry, square it, square it, it's an open goal. Never mind. I'll be honest, the person who went with him didn't really move into a, into a spot to receive that ball. So just while this half is evaporating and there's no more highlights, I just want to talk real quickly about, firstly, apologies for no episode yesterday. Zobazai like, goes close. Christian holds. That is the end of that highlight. I thought it was going to continue. Yeah, so apologies for yesterday. That was purely down to mental health stuff. I just didn't recover. Pull myself out of that in enough time to get an episode recorded and uploaded for Wednesday. I am recording this on the Wednesday, but far too late for me to get edited and uploaded. So this will go up on Thursday as you're watching it right now. Uh, that's partially because also because in the morning of Thursday, I will be receiving a new desk and therefore won't have, won't have the normal editing time in the morning that I normally use because I'll be putting that up. And then Friday it will be as normal. I record in the afternoon. Hopefully it won't be an all day thing putting that desk together. We're not doing too badly at all here. Episode of Friday should be as normal with the new desk. <laughs> and so will the... Hang on a second. Why is it saying we're winning in the top left? Why, why has the table got us winning? I'm really confused. How have we gone top? Apparently we nearly scored there, but not quite. I mean, now they've got a chance. Tipple's at the post and he's got the rebound. He may count as offside or whatever. He is. Miles off, mate. Miles off, Chris. Don't do that for England, please. I am so confused. Why is he treating this as if we've won? Vidal's doing terrible. I'll bring on Carpentier as well, uh, particularly as their right back is looking really tired. We'll focus on him as well in these remaining five minutes. And we've got a corner on this left hand side, so clearly something's come of that. Good doy. I think, I think Aldo is basically just blocked that at point blank range. Right, so the table's sorted itself out again. I thought it was about I thought it was about to tell me we were gonna win. Like he was sort of preempting a goal. And it hasn't well, timing. Fiore lobs that one quite deep in. It's the goalkeeper who punches it out, actually. Fiore on the end of this. Two book players connecting there, and Costa doesn't do great. Fiore's second goal of the season, that, and that's basically one of, well, apart from the other goal, clearly, two good things he's done this year. I don't know what his assists are like. And maybe, maybe now it's February, March in game. Not really certain. I think it's March in game. Now it's marching game. Maybe he's settling Courage, of course, in their defensive line. I've not even mentioned that yet. But yeah, Courage in their defensive line has got the ball now, passes it to Robinson. Of course, England teammates. Rosie, is he about to equalise? He isn't. It's a free kick, though. He was offside. And I'll just make that third one for whoever is most tired, and that is Vidarsson. Hong Kong's grinds the remaining few, and there's three minutes of injury time, and this is the most, arguably, the most crucial three points we could be picking up here, because let's be honest, it's technically six. Grimes whips that across. Courage heads it clear. I mean, I'll be honest, like he never didn't really perform. He doesn't like big matches. And this is one of them. Carpentier on the ball now. Make it two. Nearly. Can we not have another highlight? This is 50 seconds from time. So this is either going to be devastation or worried about penalty there for a second. Carpentier has got the ball though. Just hold on to it, mate. Castillo, Parkinson. This is too close to Parkinson. We know what he's like. He, well, he's, he's kicked it out for a throw in. At least it's not a corner. That could have been worse because the AI doesn't exploit long throws. Costa play, plays it short. Jamaica's hoofed it in. He's so tired. If we can get a ch run on here, we should get ahead of him. Carpentier is in all of the space over here, but so he's going to force rightwards. Not a phrase. Fiore. I mean, it's 93 minutes now. If anything happens, it's happening in their end of the pitch, which is good. Cantoro's pumps it towards Costa, and I really, really expecting his throw here, kick here to be the end of the game. Castillo gets under it anyway. Carpentier has actually got into attacking position, so maybe it won't end just yet. If it gets played backwards, I suspect they may blow the whistle. There we are. Manchester City goalkeeper Diogo Costa was finally beaten today, having previously gone 1,068 consecutive minutes without conceding. They've won 10 in a row, which explains their rise. 1,000 minutes without conceding. <laughs> Good God. And our slightly shaky form actually had Man City as favourites. So, Hoffenheim in three days. I'm really hoping the England squad stuff I have to do after the match. So we'll see how the rest of that top four react. Arsenal, Newcastle, Liverpool at West Brom. Man United and Tottenham play each other, but this year that's 8v12. That was 2nd v 3rd last year at one point. I think Tottenham fell quite off, actually. So Liverpool and Arsenal both win, which means the top four still separated by five points at this stage of the season. Six points clear of Everton, fifth, though. C certainly a little bit removed. Tell you what, eight games to go. I've just noticed the bottom end of the table. Yeah, those four spots are really tight there, apart from Stoke, of course, at the very bottom. 13 points is lower than Derby's total, isn't it? Eight games to go. Can they get another point? They've just lost 6-0 to the team, now in 17th. So, of course, two away goals against Hoffenheim means a 0-0 draw or a one all draw will do us just fine. As long as we don't lose, 
or concede more than two, we should be okay here, he says with some confidence. Rick looking a smidge tired, but I don't really see that much need to change anyone in the first 11. A few players on yellow, yellow card warnings, but we're not in a comfortable position to be starting this match in, so kind of irrelevant. So same first 11 in the end there. We're going to have to risk the yellow cards. Nothing we can do about that. We need to get through this match first. It's not about preservation. It's about progression. Now, of course, while a ball draw would see us through, it would be a bit boring as part of an episode. But there is a highlight here, and it starts with Hoffenheim possession. Worryingly, three players on that side. They have managed to overload that side, concerningly, and head it over. Keep an eye on that throughout the match. Ah, so, good news. The one player in the back line who doesn't have a booking warning for next match has been booked. Well, they at the back post Christian holds. This is worrying from us, although not the end of the highlight. Ramirez gathers this one. Plenty of space, I notice, on... Well, there was plenty of space over here. Cantoro runs at number two, goes past number two, smashes it in! I said he's been scoring as well as assisting lately, and... Well, there we have it, folks. There we have it. Ramirez, I did point out there was space over here. I mean, he did decide to charge directly out of the defender rather than going into the space, but... Oh, just bamboozles that defender and wallops it into the goal. Is the... the pff, yeah, wallop. A word not often used, but wallop nonetheless. And one goal to the good here puts us in a slightly more comfortable position. Of course, two goals for them makes it entirely relevant, but now they do have to score two. And I'll be honest, as I said, it may not be entertaining, but I'm happy to watch those minutes just tick by at this stage in time. Don't look at the scoreboard. Don't think it's done. My backline stress. What's wrong with you idiots? There we are. It's not the most convincing game. Six shots, four shots on target. It's a decent ratio of shots on target, but not exactly the most prolific we've been. I think we ended up with like 40 shots against Leicester in the end. We only ended up 4-0, but we just battered their goal. Or around their goal, at the very least. I think it ended up with being... It may have actually ended up being a record-breaking save match just because of the sheer number of shots on target, even though it ended up 4-0. But Rick, all the way back to Christian, Castillo. And I'll be honest, the way we played against Leicester did fill me with a little bit of hope for the Man City game. Godoy's made it too. And that is hopefully that. 55 minutes on the clock. There's still 45 minutes for them to do something. Of course, two goals. Two goals now takes us to extra time. Won't see them through. But two goals for them would still make things problematic. And of course, they came from two down last time out so let's just not sit on our laurels rest on our laurels that's the phrase just yet and media highlight worries me we got a look at the average ratings with tunnel up average 6.9 they are tunnel down of course that's how football works 6.57 is that really the highlight the hi this is say it does say that would be some goal at the end so i think yep that was that ramirez on a 6.5 seri on a 6.4 is a bit worrying free on a 6.52 and Actually, that 6.5 with Fiore is one I'm going to preserve because he's one of the players that will be out next match. And Seri too, for that matter, thinking about it. Uh, Grimes on, swap him over. With Vidarsson, who can do the Mazzala a little bit better, even though he's not got, even though he's not got the full circle for Mazzala, he does have the uh, attributes for it. Well, at least better than Grimes does. Parkinson, Vidarsson, still Vidarsson. Castillo, coming in, coming in, still coming in. He's at the post. It's ended up in their goalkeeper's hands somehow. Not sure. And I think with 84 minutes on the clock, we've got a corner. I mean, that's not what I have to think about, but could always hit it close. But I th what I was going to say is I think with 84 minutes on the clock, I can make a third change. And whilst I'm tempted to take Rick off just in case, I think Carpentier for Ramirez is probably the best shout. Well, let this highlight sort itself out before we do anything, though. 85 minutes on the clock, they're passing back to the goalkeeper, which is always helpful. But it is giving them a chance to build a move from the back. As players get pulled slightly out of position, we do press quite heavily they found their way to not to bracket though godoy's going to get under this and they have committed quite a few men forward as they kind of need to of course godoy's gone past one he's hit it straight at daniel the palmy is looking at cantoro there on 70 percent actually fitness why is it my actually need ramirez is yeah okay ramirez, ramirez's game has picked up a little bit actually so godoy moves out to the right we preserve cantoro it's fitness wise and bring on carpentier up front instead i, I know it's for darson's a little bit more time but we've got the personnel in the middle a little bit better for rotation going forward and 2-0 nice simple efficient in the end without no drama that's why i like no drama about that one it was a little bit sketchy at the very very beginning i was worried at the beginning when they i had they had a bit of an overload on one side i was but they never really capitalized right, it's a good win 2-0 the draws in a few days time i may just click through actually to that so you know what the draw is right so quarter final time view that draw Eight teams remain. Barcelona, Manchester United, PSG, Benfica have done well again. Real Madrid, Milan and Manchester City. Tough lot, really. Chelsea beaten, though, clearly. 
The Manchester United get last year's finalist Benfica. By Munich knocked out, I do notice. They won it last year. Barcelona draw PSG, which leaves us with Manchester City, Real Madrid, and our old favourites. <laughs> right then. Revenge time it is. Revenge time it is. Wow, okay. I mean, I love, I love that sentence. With the draw pitting York's riches away to Milan's rather more modest budget. How times have changed. And then semi-finals sees us play either City or Madrid. And if we get past Milan, of course, something we haven't managed to do last year. <laughs> so Benfica actually got their revenge against Bayern. I completely forgot that was the draw. It was last year's, last year's two finalists against each other. Interesting. Ah, so those two games do pop themselves into the near future. I think we'll probably just play both of them in the same episode and just gloss over the Southampton match in between. That's probably the most sensible thing to do. So until then, ta -ra.